All right, I'm up to wiring this bike. So it's a good time to do a, a video on one of the topics that I've wanted to do for a little while, and that is ignition side wiring of a twin cam motor swap into an FXR, or even if you're building a custom chopper, custom twin cam bike, or you are um, removing your fuel injection from a late model twin cam as well. It all applies, um, and it's all the same way to go about it. So the reason I'm doing this video is because when I was looking online for options, there wasn't a great deal of information around and the stuff that was was all pointing towards one particular way of going about it and after i did a bit more digging and a bit more looking into the actual technology and the capabilities behind the ignition systems there was a, a real clear winner for me both in terms of capability and simplicity so um I just wanted to make that information a bit more available it probably is available to people in the know and to people that have some common sense that I didn't have at the time, but when I was doing it, it, it seemed like a bit of a dark art about how you would wire a twin cam motor into another bike, and it's it's really not complex. Like it's very very simple. Um, so I just wanted to make it a bit more accessible. So the two main ways to go about it are a standalone ignition system, and the most popular of those being the Thunderheart system or an OEM style, which is my preference, and I'll cover why. So the main, I guess the main benefits of a standalone system are that it is standalone. You're not overly kind of tapping into um, like existing looms or um, dealing with like a spaghetti like that, that on the surface looks quite complex, but it's not. And then the other reason is the price. So... These the Thunderhearts run for about 350 US, which is much cheaper than like the Daytona Twin Tech style, which is 500 bucks. Well, it's 150 dollars cheaper to me. That's money well spent, but to others it's not. Um, whereas the German-made Altman, even though it's way way better than the Thunderheart, it's it's heaps more expensive as well. I think it's like 520 US um, once you convert it. So just to cover how they go about it your altman or your thunder heart has seven wires essentially it has to cover your crank that that's a non-negotiable in terms of getting your twin game running it's got a taco for functionality you've got a ground and then you've got your three plug coil which is there um that's it really they sell it as simple because you don't need to use special tools. You can just use screw on terminals. You don't need to use plugs or whatever. Um, and it is quite simple. The biggest, the biggest issue that I see is that in terms of functionality, this is behind even the Evo system of ignition because there is absolutely nothing to tell this ecu what load your bike is under so it doesn't know whether you're on a massive tourer um you know really lugging it to get up a hill at 2500 rpm 3000 rpm it doesn't know if you're full throttle on a super light fxr on a worked motor um and it doesn't know if you're sitting on a highway like it just has no functionality where even an Evo style ignition, you've got that Vose switch, which is a like a vacuum operated. I don't know what E stands for. Vacuum operated something switch, um, but it can tell when you're under very little load, uh, like you're idling or you're on a highway, and it can advance the timing, get you a bit better fuel economy, better fuel uh, throttle response, and a couple of other bits and pieces. And then when you when it's under load or you're giving it the boot or whatever that vacuum disappears um, and your ignition goes back to normal on your normal curves. So with these, sorry, with these, you don't have that input. It's just crank as the only input, really. Um, the bike doesn't know anything other than that. Again, excuse the ghetto diagram. Your standalone ignition, you have a single, like you've got a curve, right? You can change it and tweak the shape of it, um, the the points and where it's high or low or whatever uh on the altman you can do that with much more fidelity than you can on the thunderheart that's super basic um but i guess the key thing is at a given rpm you are at a certain timing non-negotiable like whether you're at 3000 rpm so if you're at 3000 rpm and you're at 40 degrees timing on that curve that you've picked 
that's it. So if you're lugging it up a hill at 3,000 RPM uh, or you're on a highway with no load just cruising part throttle at 3,000 RPM, the bike's got no idea and your timing is the same. So you can run into issues with um, pinging and tuning that pinging out because you just don't have that fidelity and the, the manipulation of your curve um, as well as some of the other bikes. With an OEM system and a some type of vacuum input, be a, a Vose or whatever, like a Vose would have two maps, I think, whereas the OEM style has a map sensor, your manifold absolute pressure sensor that sits on your manifold, and it can tell um, what kind of load is happening or like going on on your bike, and it adjusts it with that. So again, get a diagram. The twin tech on the least aggressive curve has a really fat um, kind of curve, so it's pretty safe. You can tune that to be super thin if you know exactly what you're doing and you've got that capability and to, to kind of squeeze every last bit out of it, but it can fall within a range and it's got scope to move. On a standalone ignition with no input kind of telling it, your RPM is directly equivalent to your timing and that's it. What you get is what you're given. The other thing that I'll cover off here when we talk about pressure sensors or whatever is, so very early twin cams have a cam sensor, which is similar to kind of the, the Evo style where it picks up um, where your cam's at. And that's so that your ignition system knows what stroke it's on so it knows when to fire. Later model stuff doesn't have that cam sensor because they essentially made this algorithm real good inside the ECUs and based on the, the signals going through your map sensor, it can tell you, um, like you can tell the ECU what stroke it's on and fire it straight away. These, without having that, that input, I think you'll find most of these generally crank twice, like they'll spin twice before they, they provide any um, power to your plugs. And depending on how your tune is, if you've got two revolutions of fuel inside your motor and then a spark, it can backfire. So I've heard a few people complain about that. I've heard people complain about why their bike kind of cranks twice before firing. And that's the reason. Like it just has no input or no way of knowing what stroke it's on. So it, it does its revolutions and then figures it out and then gives it spark when, it's, when it knows. Whereas these ones... Basically, instantly you can tell from your map sensor whether your valves are open or closed or what it's doing and um, give it spark when it needs. So the other way is your OEM style ignition system, which I'll get rid of this for now. On paper, it looks quite complex um, because you've got two plugs, a bunch of wires. What I'll say is that Half of these plugs are not even used. They, I don't really understand why they do two 12-point plugs, but whatever. So half of them aren't used, um, like the inputs aren't used. And then the, the stuff that is there is so simple that there's just real, really no excuse for not using it, for my mind. So you order this. You've got your twin cam motor kind of set up. It's got all the sensors that it came with. Um, you've got a carb manifold on there with a map sensor and then you get this out of the box and you want to fire it up. You've got your two plugs, which go, spin those around, but they go into their respective 12 point um, receptacles. Your, you get this one, which I've labeled these, they don't come labeled, but it's super simple to figure out. So you've got a map sensor. That plugs straight into your manifold. You've got this one, which plugs straight into your coil, which is right next to your manifold. You've got this plug, which is your crank angle sensor, which again, non-negotiable. That's just a positive negative hall sensor, so that's straightforward. You get this plug, which is a PC diagnostics uh, plug. And then literally all you're left with is, oh sorry, one more. You get a ground, so you're negative. And all you're left with are two wires, a pink one, which is your taco out. So that wire, I don't think it's got enough to, it's just a signal wire. I don't think it's got enough to actually power a taco, um, but I could be wrong. 
I might be mixing it up. There's a check engine light that definitely says it's a signal wire that doesn't actually power an LED, but it can it can be used as an input to fire off something. Um, so you've got your taco, and then you've got your power in, and that's it. If you were to put, uh, like you could literally wire that to your battery or bloody wire it to your ignition, turn your key, and your entire ignition side um, of the bike is sorted. So if you jump your starter, spin it, like your ECU is going to work, your bloody um, coils are going to work, the bike will fire up. Um, and to me, that's half the battle. Like you've got all of these plugs, but they're all the, where they plug into on the bike is super obvious. So there's just no real dramas in that space to me. Um, for simplicity, I'm wiring up the rest of the bike with a moto gadget, so like I would run that power wire to an ignition, but on a on a regular bike that comes from your key, I think. But once you've plugged all that in, your entire wiring, so your entire ignition side of the bike is sorted. Um, your RPM, whatever, it's all taken care of, and all you've got to do after that is essentially all of your like accessories or your idiot lights, your um, indicators tail brake all of that but in terms of like this bunch of spaghetti it's all taken care of straight away with one harness um, and i'll show you the the stuff that i use that's the um the like the module that i've got that's a set of random plugs uh, and wires and then that's it really so once you look into it, you start looking at the manuals for each and what, what each of them can do, you kind of quickly realize that these standalone ECUs, whilst they can be a little bit cheaper and, and they are sold as simple, like this is just as simple to me. This is like really plug and play. You're left with two wires, one which you can disregard if you didn't want, but um, you've got a power input and that's it a ground and a power input and your engine is firing up and running. So, um, yeah, that's about it. There's not a great deal else to cover. Once you've got that kind of stuff, all you're doing is kind of figuring out your routing. Obviously you've got your map sensor there. You've got your coil there. You've got your crank angle sensor there, but that runs all the way around. Um, and then that's it. So, that's all I wanted to cover. If you've got any questions about it, give me a bell. Um, that's it.